Here now is Matt Austin and Ginger Gadston with Florida's Fourth Estate. Hey, welcome to Florida's Fourth Estate, everyone. So glad you can join us for another week of just crazy headlines. It's Florida, so of course the crazy headlines are going to happen. I'm Ginger Gadsden. Hey, I'm Matt Austin, and can I just say I'm so glad Florida is not the center of the news universe. They didn't find cocaine at the state capitol, okay? They found cocaine at the White House. (laughs) It is the next... Forget cocaine bear, forget snakes on a plane. We've got cocaine in the White House, but we're not even talking about it because it's not us. You just did. You just did. I had to because it's so fascinating. It really is. You chose to. (laughs) I chose violence today. So, uh, but so did a neighbor. Man, this is, we have been covering this story for the last few weeks and it's just been wild to see and the more this onion gets peeled the more it stinks so we had this tragic story about a single mom of four who was shot through the door by her neighbor okay that was the initial what we heard happen well it turned out this neighbor has called police on neighborhood kids and other neighbors 14 times over the last few years and so we looked up the body camera video of this whole situation between the neighbor, a woman named Susan Lorenz, and the woman who was eventually shot, whose name is A.J. Owens. So let's show you a story that was put together by our own Treasure Roberts. I wanna show you a snippet of this, just so you can get an idea of this woman who kept calling police on the neighbors. Specifically, she seemed fixated on the kids in the neighborhood. Take a listen. Body camera video of accused shooter Susan Lorenz reveals she had long-standing issues with several neighbors. Including children. She always calls her cops and she always plays right, 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 and they're she playing over. Right bastards. And then the she b- tells us b- off and stuff. And she calls she us a N-word. In a total of 14 clips dating back to February 2022, I watched deputies continuously respond to this neighborhood because of complaints made by Lawrence. Kids have been out of control, they're screaming, yelling, the kids have been real She repeatedly told deputies neighborhood kids bully her. I don't want to be intimidated by them screaming and yelling at me, telling me I'm a calling me Karen. I mean, they're calling me names. In April, Marion County deputies addressed her concerns about children playing in the parking lot. They need to be trespassed. They don't have here. So what I'm looking at, where they're at, we can't, tr- you can't trespass anybody from that. Right, yeah, kids are allowed to play in the parking lot. So this happened over and over again for years. And in one of the body cam videos, you can actually see the woman, AJ, who was eventually shot through the woman's door. She said her kids were out playing and this woman allegedly threw a skate at one of the kids. So she went over to her house, to her door, and then was shot through the door. So now that woman- She was shot, you forget to mention, she's dead. Yes, that's right. She was killed in front she left of four her kids. young children behind. So I, I just don't even know what, what to say about the story, except that uh, AJ Owen shouldn't be dead. Yeah, yeah, we'll be following this very closely. Uh, the other thing that's pretty controversial is that she's being charged with manslaughter, which the max is about 30 years. A lot of times you don't get that if you do get mm-hmm. convicted of manslaughter. People wanted her charged with second degree murder. That did not happen. Uh, the DA saying that, or the state attorney saying that you can't process, they don't have the evidence to get that. So yeah. this is a case we'll be following, uh, Ginger, but uh, just just a terrible, and it's getting yeah. national recognition now. Ben Crump is involved, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, we definitely will keep an eye on that. All right, so to lighten things up a lot, you know, it's summertime in Florida. People are here. They're visiting our beautiful beaches because that's why people come to Florida. All the sunshine and the beautiful sandy beaches. There's video that's coming out of Pensacola. It happened over the 4th of July weekend, Matt, that when you see it, it almost looks Photoshop. And I had to look at it a few times. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, crazy. it's like somebody is in the water with like a shark hat on. <laughs> <laughs> It does. It's It's like an animatronic (laughs) shark. It's a dorsal fin of this shark that's in the water swimming in between people. And I know I've never shocked sharks or sharked. I've never shocked. You're never shocked. When I see 
when I see sharks in the water. But when they're this close to shore, that is crazy. And look at people, they're still swimming. There are people on the sidelines saying like, there's a shark. Honestly, it was like they were reenacting Jaws, the scene from Jaws. <laughs> That's what have like... been what how I felt. But the funny thing what? is, as you watch it, you realize these sharks are not interested in eating people. If this shark wanted to eat no. a person, which it's big enough to take down one of these oh, kids in the water yeah. easily. It's just like, I wonder if maybe I could blend in a little bit and kind of swim around. <laughs> See if there's anything, but that's a what? That's got to be at least ten feet. Its fin is sticking out of the water as high as some of these people's heads. It's wild. <laughs> Have you I ever been I, in the water yeah. and seen one of those fins come up? I did one time with my kids. What? Ran. No. Uh, I mean, like I was on top of the water. I've never been so fast in my life. <laughs> You walk, you, I'm hearing you walked on water. I did. No, well, I don't want to say that, but it's as close as I've ever come. <laughs> I'll give you that. And hey, these days, if you're at the beach, you're not having to walk on water. You can just uh, walk on all the seaweed that's been out there. Uh, there we've talked a know. lot on this show. Okay. This one's going to get me a little, little fired up. All right. I'm just going to say that. So we had scientists who came out and said, there is this huge blob of sargassum seaweed that's going to just overtake Florida. It's going to be disgusting. And, and plenty of it did wash up on shore like it does every year. But it sort of got in the media and got built up. And we made fun of it, Ginger, when it came out, right? Like we said, oh, gosh, watch out. The sargassum is going to kill blob. you. The blob. It's the blob. Well, well, I mean, it kind of is leaving with a, th with a little slight thud here with it the big blob didn't ruin tourism so they're saying the blob is pretty much gone are you now. saying after all big that, old nothing burger big nothing burger <laughs> which i'm glad we at least on our podcast kind of pitched it the way <laughs> the way i think it deserved to be like <laughs> watch out seaweed's gonna kill you but it didn't I, we're all alive but you know when you have people doing um when you can see it from space <laughs> <laughs> and it's coming for you. I mean, what are we supposed to do? Ignore it? No. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. We'll keep speaking, speaking of things that are just insane, this story blew our minds when it happened. It's been eight years now. We met this young, bright little boy, seven years old at the time. His name is Alex Pring. And we met him because... He was born with an arm deformity and uh, Limitless Solutions made him the special arm. And it was an Iron Man arm, as you can see. And Robert Downey Jr. presented it to him. It was a huge surprise. Alex said he had no idea he was going to get it. Well, fast forward to 2023 <laughs> and the man you're seeing, look, at, look at that man you're seeing on your screen is, <laughs> is 15 now plays football and is a force to be reckoned with. He has really turned into just an incredible teen and inspirational as well. We spoke to him and he just talked about how he has to really work three times as hard as anyone else, but he's not bitter. He wants to do the work. He's willing to do the work because he wants to be good. And by God, he's a linebacker and he is good. And he's Big. So oh just gosh. a little foreshadowing here for a future episode of Florida's Fourth Estate. This is one of our favorite characters. We've been following him and talking to him for eight years now since he was a little boy. In fact, Ginger has pictures of us with little bitty Alex Pring here at the station. And uh, we've just grown so attached. So we're going to have him on an episode coming up uh, in maybe a week or two. And you can check out what who was a young boy is now this composed man who's looking me dead in the eye at 15 years old with some big old broad shoulders. Yeah, very, you'll, you'll love to meet him coming up. That's a quick update on Alex Pring. Coming up after the break, we're going to introduce you to a woman who saves wolves for a living. Yes, in the state of Florida. And you won't believe the television show that started this big problem of people buying wolves and then getting in way over their heads. Stick with us. We're going to do a little howling after the break. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Florida's Fourth Estate. So glad you're with us today. We have a show, let's call it 
Florida Fourth Estate goes wild because we are talking oh. about. Um, uh, <laughs> did you really just howl? I did it. <laughs> We are talking about some of the most beautiful creatures on the planet. We both love these animals, but we shouldn't keep them as pets. I'm Ginger Gadsden. That's fair. We're talking about alligators today. Terminator? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we're talking about wolves, which a lot of people think, like, what are you talking about? Florida wolves? Well, there are a lot of people in Florida who have decided that, hey, I like the Game of Thrones, so I'm going to go buy myself a wolf. It's a terrible idea. And we are talking to a woman who is left with everybody else's bad yeah. decisions, and she has to try to fix things. So this is Deanna Depp, and she's been doing this for decades now. She's the executive director of Shy Wolf Sanctuary in Naples. They do a lot of good work out there. Deanna, first off, thank you so much for joining us on our podcast today. Thank you for having us. Oh, it is our pleasure. So, well, let's start out with the problem, okay? Most people think uh, there are dogs and there are wolves, but there's there are mixes in between and things get very complicated. So, tell us about the issue that we see when someone buys, say, a 100% wolf and brings it into their home or, God forbid, their apartment. Well, Florida, Florida actually requires licensing, so you should not have a full wolf without having two and a half acres, 500 hours working with them, 10-foot fences and an 8-foot perimeter fence. So there are some requirements for owning a wolf. In the wild, they can travel up to 120 miles per day, up to 40 miles per hour, and they have needs where they need to stay active. So, you know, people talk about couch wolves. Your, your dogs have been bred over tens of thousands of years for specific jobs and that's why they like to be with us wolves even bred in captivity have more of an independent um nature about them so yardley's wanting to get in on the show here <laughs> what a beautiful yeah that, he is beautiful now that's not a hundred percent wolf there that's a is it a wolf hound high is that a hybrid right he, he's a dog. Yeah, he's a wolf dog. Um, oh. They are a lot of times called hybrids. He is largely Malamute, Shepherd, and Husky. Okay, and I, I don't need you to explain some the wolf. science to me, but tell me, how, how does this happen? <laughs> well, <laughs> Ginger, the birds and the bees. <laughs> One wolf <laughs> looks at another, emotions run when high. In when in nature would my dog find a, a wolf just in the backyard how do people do it, this it, it wouldn't happen in nature it <laughs> happens because people intentionally breed them and and typically they have a dog that they breed to a wolf dog or they have two wolf dogs they don't have a wolf and a dog um, but there are some in captivity so that's how we get wolf dogs is because there are some with recent you know wolf lineage there are people that have them if someone has say a 100 percent wolf or a dog that has a percentage of wolf like you're in with right now and you raise them in a ha a normal house I'm not talking two acres and 10 foot fences you take them and you leave them in your apartment all day while you go to work what happens? What's the difference between this and just a regular old black lab? Well, honestly, it, it may be no different. You know, labs can be destructive. They can eat things and eat toys and swallow things and have to have surgeries. And these wolf dogs can too. Um, the biggest difference is you don't know what you're going to get with the wolf dogs because they haven't been bred over tens of thousands of years to want to be with us. That's why we encourage people, if they want one of these animals, adopt. You know, we have animals that need homes that we're being called to rescue, and many of them are adoptable, and we screen them for that pet quality. Okay, so I'm curious as to how you got started, because this is a very specific kind of place. You know, most people will say, oh, I'll have a sanctuary for dogs and or, you know, kennels. But how did you get into this particular thing? Nancy rescued a three-legged black Asian leopard. That was the first animal she rescued. And then a couple of cougars and then four wolf pups came along after that. She had been volunteering at another facility and, and these animals came through that facility to her. And then people started calling her directly. And it, it really became more of an issue of wolf dogs not having a place to go because they're the the red-headed stepchild you know people want dogs or they want wolves and wolf dogs 
people can get as pets and they have them and then they start having these problems whether it's just containment issues like digging climbing or it's separation anxiety or other things that they're not prepared to deal with and there's nowhere for these wolf dogs to go because shelters won't adopt them out they'll put them down um, other mm -hmm. rescues won't take them they consider them unadoptable or don't know how to place them properly mm -hmm. so they just have nowhere else to go. And you know, a lot of us are introduced to wolves with the fairy tale Little Red Riding Hood, and the wolf is a you know it, not a very nice creature. But the name of your sh sanctuary is Shy Wolf because they really don't want to be around people. They're very shy. They run away from people, and in fact, if we have people visiting the sanctuary at a time when we're trying to feed, it really messes up our feeding because. They won't even eat. That's when they're most vulnerable, and they won't eat if they hear strange things going on on the property during their feeding time. So it, it can really make it challenging to try to get them to come back and get their meat. And, you know, wolfing it down is a real thing. They devour their food generally. <laughs> but, but if they hear, like if you were to come down here and they heard your voice, we would be able to get them to come up and take the meat no wow. matter how tempting it is so that that's where shy wolf comes from we were walking around with deanna and she has the ipad in her hand and when she would enter a new location the wolves definitely like her arr, arr, arr. <laughs> they started going nuts whenever deanna <laughs> would enter a new location deanna if people want to help okay this is, you don't operate like a zoo uh, or like a normal thing where people can go and buy tickets and you know that's how, how, what is the best way to help and what do you need the most help with right now out there in Naples? We need the most help with planning and preparing to move to a new property. We bought 17 acres and we are in the process of planning that site and going through the steps to be able to build. But we're going to have to, all these chain link fences that you see behind me, we have to build all this from scratch again on the new property. Wow. So it's going to be a major, major undertaking for us. So just underwriting the cost of our operating expenses, sponsoring a wolf and feeding it for a year or a pack, feeding a pack for a year, cash donations are the best thing for us because we can put it towards whatever's needed if we need to redo a house or if we need to buy food. Um, so really that and just actually physically volunteering, people coming here and helping us with the day-to-day -day care of the animals. We have two staff members that are here during the week. Um, but other than that, it's all volunteers that are doing the care for our animals. There are several ways to join your wolf pack. We love them. Oh, the best ways absolutely. You're good. That's why I keep her. That's why I keep her on this show. The only reason, uh, Deanna. What, okay, last final question. What is the, what's the biggest wolf at Shy Wolf Sanctuary? Uh, the biggest one we ever rescued was 165 pounds. The biggest one that went viral was Yukai, who, who was everyone has seen on the internet. He was really only about 110, 120 pounds, but the photo of him made him look much bigger. They <laughs> tend to stay between like 80 and 100 pounds for the, for the full wolves. They, they aren't really as big as you might think they are. Yeah, they're okay. really lean, right? Yeah, they're, they're lean and they're leggy. And if you wanted to hear the whole pack howl, if you wanted to help me, we could probably get them howling for you before oh, you sign Yes. Off. I feel yes. like this is a bucket 100%. list moment. How do we do this? <laughs> okay, we just got to get them howling in one, one two, three. Oh! <laughs> Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. That's the coolest thing that's ever happened. <laughs> that is amazing. I love it. <laughs> I can't believe that just happened. Oh my gosh, Deanna, you just made my whole You thing. did. That was amazing. <laughs> Deanna, you're the best. Deanna Depp, an executive director of Shy Wolf Sanctuary out in Naples. Check them out. They've got a great website. Uh, I believe they're on social media, too. Oh, and Lord. help them out. Maybe donate yeah. a, uh, a package to them. That'd be great. And thank you for watching Florida's Fourth Estate. You can download it from wherever you listen to podcasts or watch anytime on News 6+.